Once we have a table and a connection string defined, then we can start exposing SQL tables from our app service. Depending on our backend server code choice, we have different steps to take, but the actual endpoint and its behavior will be exactly the same. First, if we use ASP.NET to define our service, then we need to write some code to expose the proper table controller and a defined data transfer entity object. If we use the default node approach, then we can actually configure and expose the table completely through the portal. Let's look at both of these approaches, and we'll start with the .NET style. When you're using ASP.NET MVC approach, we need two pieces of information to expose a table from our service. The first is a data transfer object, or a DTO. This is also sometimes called an entity by some frameworks. This is an object definition that represents the data that is going to be passed from the server to the client and vice versa. Each property defines a column in the database which will be passed over the network connection. Second, we have a table controller object for every exposed table and endpoint. This is a class which derives from the built-in table controller of type T class. This base class implements all the database methods and HTTP requirements. You just supply the shape of the data in the form of a DTO. This might sound like you have a bit of work to do to expose a table, but it turns out that it's not that much code, and the Visual Studio template creates both of these for a to-do implementation, which you can then just replace with your own data objects. The data transfer object is a public.NET class that represents the data going back and forth from the client and the server. Anything you want communicated between the client and the server must be present in some form in this class. This class has a second purpose in your service code as well. It also serves as the database model. Notice that it derives from an entity database class. This is a class in the Azure SDK, but it ultimately derives from an entity framework class. Entity Framework is the latest in data access and ORM technologies from Microsoft. It's essentially the same as SQLite.net if you've taken our XAM 160 data and mobile class. The public properties defined on this object are mapped to columns in the associated database table. The base class provides the database requirements, including five mandatory columns which are mapped to public properties. There's the ID, which is the primary key, created at, which is when the record was created, deleted, which is whether the record has been deleted by the client, updated at, the last update timestamp, and the version, which is the current version of this record. We'll look at these five columns again when we examine the Node.js approach. They are a required part of the database schema for any table exposed by a table controller. You can add them to an existing table, and we'll see this approach in a bit, or you can let NAD Framework create them when it generates the table as part of the code first generation mechanism. As I mentioned a moment ago, NAD Framework is an object relational mapper, or ORM. Its job is to map a table in your database to a .NET type. The DTO you define will determine the shape and the name of the database table that it represents. Each DTO is mapped to a single table in the database by NAD Framework. By default, the name of the class you define will be used as the name of the associated table. NAD Framework will create this table if it doesn't exist the very first time we access the database through NAD Framework. And public properties in our DTO will be mapped and assigned to columns in the database table by name. If you don't want to use this default mapping scheme, or you're trying to map a DTO to an existing table that doesn't quite match up, you can decorate your DTO with attributes from NAD Framework to customize how it maps your DTO to the table. These only change the column mappings. The DTO wire mappings are not changed by these values. So you can identify the table to map to this class. You can also change the name of the column through a column attribute. You can indicate that some properties have no database representation and should be ignored by NAD Framework. And you can add an index to the column so that it can be searched efficiently in a query. These are the most common attributes that you'll add to your DTOs for mobile services, but there are others that you can look up in the Entity Framework documentation. You can define foreign keys and relationships, you can specify the column data type, you can indicate that a column is required, or you can set a minimum or maximum length for the text. The other duty of this object is as the DTO which is passed over the network connection. The Entity Framework attributes have no bearing on this mapping. Instead, we're going to use either data annotations or JSON.NET attributes to control this mapping. As an example here, we're setting the name of the field that's passed in the JSON data structure to be to-do instead of text. By default, it uses the column name in JavaScript form, so camel-cased property names. We're showing the JSON.NET approach here, 
But you could also use WCF data annotations, things like data member, to control the wire definition. Either one is allowed and both are fully supported. Thank you.